Well, hello, kids. This episode of Celebration is currently under construction. And as you can see, we got a whole bunch of fun stuff. We're going to teach you about how to build your faith, you know, through the Word of God. And we actually have some fun stuff to talk about today. We have a little bit of this. We also have a little bit of that. God had told and instructed Noah to build this huge ark. The ark was so big, it was 625 feet long and it was 104 feet wide. You know, that's like two football fields put together. As that, that's how long oh, wow. the Noah's ark was. I mean, it was huge. Wow, that's a pretty awesome boat, I think so. I, I swim in that boat. And then we also have this guy and he's a little bit People, people say he looks like me. I don't get it. I don't see it. But you know what? Let's go ahead and check him out. Oh, well, hi there, kids. I'm Rob the Builder, and I'm here to talk to you about your faith. As you can see, I've got this beautiful house going up behind me. It's not much now, but we got the foundation in, and that's the most important part. Wow, that guy really, that, he really does look like me. Man, I'm gonna have to talk to him. Maybe we're, maybe we're kin, you know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Celebration. We got a fun song service for you. Hi, I'm Pastor JT, and because of our construction theme episode today, we've got a wheelbarrow race for you guys. Are you guys ready? Yeah! 
Yeah. Natalie, tell us who we got in our contestants today. All right, we have a girls team. We have Emily and Adea. Who thinks the girls are going to win? And we have a boys team. We have Peyton and Aiden. Give it up for the guys. That's what I'm rooting for. All right. Are you guys ready? Here's the rule. So what we're going to do is you are going to have to take one person in the wheelbarrow all the way down to those cones and then switch at the end. So the person in the wheelbarrow will have to get out and the person that was pushing will have to switch and then the other person will push that person back and the first one back across this line right here wins. Are you ready? Yeah! All right, go ahead and get in position. All right, all right. girls, you got it, Isaiah Emily. You guys, you got it. Turn around, Peyton. All right, here we go. On your mark, get set. Go! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, the girls go, are go, go, go. Oh, Tough loss, guys. Great job, girls. Listen, thank you guys. Thank you kids so much for watching our crowd breaker today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. All right, kids, join in with us, and parents, you can join too. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Can everybody just lift your hand and worship with us? King of Valley's worth There's no crown above you Take your rightful place Here in my life, here in my life God of boundless love Tearing down my eyes 
to another edition of Celebration Online. We are so glad that you decided to tune in today. Well, as you can see, we are having a construction kind of day here in Celebration, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But first, let's review. We've talked about faith, and we started with hope, and how hope is a target for our faith. It's that dream, that goal on the inside. And then we talked about faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Well, how do we get faith? The Bible tells us in Romans 10.17 that faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. You must be hearing the Word of God. So kids, and I encourage you to watch Celebration Online to get back in church and to listen to that great faith-building worship music. Well, we also talked about walking by faith, not to see things with our natural eyes, but to see things how God sees them. We talked about growing your faith and building your faith. We talked about releasing our faith, how we need to act on the word, pray, and we need to speak the word. Well, today, kids, we want to teach you that faith is like a tool. Just like a construction worker or handyman, he might use a hammer. Well, what does he use a hammer for? He's going to take the nails and hammer it into the wood to put things together, maybe a table, another piece of furniture, or maybe they're even building a house, a big, beautiful house. Well, another tool a construction worker might use is a screwdriver to put those screws also into the wood or into metal to keep them together. A construction worker's tools are very important. Well, kids, we have an important tool, and that is called faith. We need to use our faith, and we need to act on the Word. And what is the Word? It's the Bible. So when we're using our faith to believe something, we need to find our scripture and act on the word. So today we want to teach you that your faith is like a tool and that you need to act on the word. And don't forget, kids, when you're believing God for something, make sure it's okay with mom and dad and make sure it's in the Bible. All right, well, we have another secret code for you today. It is four words and we're giving you the two words in the middle so you have to figure out the two words on the outside for a total of seven letters piece of cake right so make sure you pay attention today to find those seven letters to form today's secret code we're gonna have a lot of fun with our construction theme as we teach you a more about faith hi kids my name is miss joanna from georgetown and I've got a great memory verse for you guys. So let's open up those Bibles and we're going to go to James 1.22. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So today I have problems with my light bulb here and I need help. So I called my friend Elijah the electrician. So let's see if he'll come on down. Hey! Hey, teacher, how are you doing today? That's right, I'm Elijah the Electrician. What's going on? You got your light bulb, it's not working today? Well, I'm gonna fix that right up for you. I got my tools with me, look at all this stuff I got. I got my hammer. I don't think we need to hammer anything, but if I, if I need to. But anyway, I got my drill with me. Oh, I see, okay, so we got this light bulb. Is this what's not working? We need to get it working? Right. All right, well, you know what? We, I, I heard you were talking to the kids about faith, amen? And so, you know, faith is like a tool. As I got my toolbox right here. now. You know, as an electrician, there's all kinds of things that I like to do when I go into a, a place to fix electricity. And I got some special tools with me today, and I got my, my meters with me. And um, what I like to do is I'm putting my little meter here, right here, and it's going to plug up, and it'll let me know if it's hot. So let's test that out. Let's try this plug first, and let's see. Up, oh, I'm not getting anything. Let's try this one. This one doesn't have anything attached to it. Nothing's happening. Maybe this one right here. Oh, look at that. Look, okay, so there we go. Now we, we got that. And you know what? I help install these kind of things. You know, you, you don't you want to be real careful. You don't want to just stick anything in there. Like, you know, you don't you only want to stick things that have a have a plug in it like this. If not, you know what? Because man, like, whoa, man, you can get you can get you can get electrocuted. You know, you don't want that to happen. So, so you know what? So, so see, if I plug this in here, you know that there's power. What I found is there's power in every believer. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, then you have power. But see, this one right here, this little plug. It doesn't have anything connected to it. It doesn't have any power. I can plug it up and let's try your light. Let's see if it works. You know what? Nothing happens. But you know, if I take this right here and I plug it up to the one that, that we've got a signal coming from and it's got power. Look at that power right there. You can see that light. Now let's plug up your light. And let's see what happens. Teacher. All right. I see. 
Oh, look at there. Look at there, boys and girls. We got power. And see, you've got power just like this light bulb has power when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then now that you've done that, you've got power by faith. You can use your faith to believe God for many things like healing, maybe believe in God for a bicycle, maybe believe in God for someone to get saved in your family. And I would encourage you too to go and tell someone else about Jesus and, you know, have them believe. You know, teacher, what's the two things that you have to do in order to be saved? Well, number one, you have to believe in your heart. And number two, confess with your mouth. That's right. So you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. And see, that's putting your faith in action. And so just like this light bulb right here, it's like turning on a switch. You turn on the power when you believe God and you use your faith for something. All right, kids. Well, I'm so glad I got to fi fix the teacher's light now. She won't be able to, to, she'll be able to see whatever she's working on today. And I'm so glad I could come, teacher. I'm going to give this back to you. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Oh, well, hi there, kids. I'm Rob the Builder, and I'm here to talk to you about your faith. As you can see, I've got this beautiful house going up behind me. It's not much now, but we got the foundation in, and that's the most important part. So, if you haven't seen me before, I'm Rob the Builder, and I like to build stuff. That's my favorite thing to do. So, I have a couple tools with me today that help me do my job. Well, kids, as you can see, I have a toolbox here with me today because I need a specialized tool set and a lot of tools with me. So, as you can see here, I have a hammer. This hammer helps me put nails into wood. And I have my nails somewhere. Aha, here we go. So as you can see, I have this hammer and I put the nail into the wood. And that helps me keep the wood together. I also have this. This is a screwdriver, but this is the one I need. See the difference here? This one's a flathead and this is a Phillips. I can only screw this type of screwdriver with, with this type of screwdriver. It needs this type of head. So as you can see here, I, I just need to turn this enough to get it stuck in the wood. Now things, now kids, Screws are better used on metal because they hold things better. So I also have one more tool. I have this saw because I like to, sometimes you need to cut wood to make the foundation for the house. So you just saw the wood. See kids, like that, I just cut through that wood there. Now as you can see, it's a nice clean cut, but sometimes you use the wrong tools for things. Like, I could never use this hammer to saw through this wood. It ain't just, it just ain't gonna work. And I'm not gonna be able to use this, this here screwdriver to tap in this nail. It, it didn't work. But you have a really important tool, kids. You have something called your faith. Your faith is your best tool in your toolbox. And you have to use it right. And so, as, in, as it says in James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You have to be acting on the word. You actually have to use your saw to cut through the wood. You can't use it in the wrong way. You can't use a hammer to screw in a nail. You just can't do it. So kids, I have one last question for you. Can you build your faith? Yes, you can! So kids, make sure to use your faith and build your faith. Hey, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Justin from over in Georgetown, and I have a great Bible story that I want to share with you guys today. And today helping me is Olivia. Can y'all give it up for Olivia today? All right. I'm so glad you could help me today on this Bible story, Olivia. But before we get to our Bible story, I want you to open your Bibles one more time to our memory verse found in James chapter 1 and verse 22. So if you got your Bibles, go there and it simply says this, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And so in other words, we need to put our faith into action. So as you can see, boys and girls, today we have a wooden boat that me and my pappy built. And so this is something that he made out of wood. And today's Bible story, we're going to be talking about Noah and Noah's ark. And how many of you know Noah built a big boat, a big boat called an ark? And so, Olivia, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to give you my Bible. And if you have your Bibles, boys and girls, I want you to go with me to Genesis. It's the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 9 through 14. 
You ready, Olivia? Yes. All right. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Great job, Olivia. That's right. So we just read the story found in Genesis chapter 6 about how Noah was building an ark. And so just kind of like this wooden boat right here. Noah's ark was way bigger than this. This is probably only about 10 feet or so. But you know, back in Noah's day, he didn't have modern tools like we have today. Like he didn't have a hammer like this, like you can go down and buy at the store. He didn't have a screwdriver. And so you know what he had to do? He would have to use something like this. He'd have to make some nails out of wood. And then, you know, he'd probably even have something kind of like a hammer like this that's made out of wood to help hammer these in. And so I've got these nails right here and this piece of wood. I'm going to have Olivia hammer these nails down. Can you, can you hit that right there? Yeah, hammer that one down there. Yeah, hammer another one right there. Yep. Yeah, look at that. And just like that. And so to put all the pieces together for the boat, he'd had to hammer and put all those things together. And then maybe even he'd have to drill some holes, kind of like this. You can see this piece of wood with some holes in it. But Olivia, if you'll hold that right there and then, you know, had to use a hand drill instead of like an automatic drill and, and a, a power drill. And so you can see that going through there. And then, and then also you'd use what is called a planer to help smooth everything out. And so you just kind of lay this on here and you slide this across like that. And then it would make these little shavings to make everything nice and smooth. So that way when you're in the water that everything would, would, would ride smoothly. And so Noah, God instructed Noah to build this ark. And did you know that, that it had not rained on the earth at that time until the flood came, until all of a sudden, until Noah had built the ark. And so the way that the, the grass and the trees would get their water was from the mist of the day and early in the morning in the dew of the day. And so that's how they would turn green and, and grow. But so all of a sudden, God had told and instructed Noah to build this huge ark. The ark was so big. It was 625 feet long and it was 104 feet wide. You know, that's like two football fields put together. As that, that's how long the Noah's Ark was. I mean, it was huge. And so by faith, he had never seen rain before. And so he's building a boat. You know what happened? There was all kinds of, of violence in the land, all kinds of bad things happening. And so you know what? People started laughing at Noah and making fun of his family. But you know what he did? He just took his hammer and kept acting on his faith. And he just kept working at what God told him to do. He kept just doing that by faith. And see, that's how we should live our lives. When God speaks to us and instructs us to do something then we should continue on and believe God because when we know God tells us something, we know God is always going to come through, right? Right. And so the, Noah built this ark, and so it took faith to build the ark. And then not only that, but it also, he had to get all the animals, at least two by two of all the animals in the ark. And, you know, it would take faith to get all those animals in the ark. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go get a lion and, and pull a, a lion onto the boat or, or snakes. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to get the snakes, you know, but, but that had to take faith to believe God that all these animals would just show up to his boat and get up on the boat and get in there. And then one day, all of a sudden Noah was instructed by God to close the door and you know what everybody all the town everybody was making fun of him and and asking him what he was doing and why he had been doing this it took him years to build this boat I mean this wasn't something that just happened overnight this is something that happened over a process of time and then do you know what when he closed that door all of a sudden it started raining and do you know how long did it rain Olivia 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. You know, I don't know, we've had some rain in the past, and it, it could feel like it was raining for days, but I thank God it didn't rain for 40 days straight and 40 nights straight. That's a long time. And so when that happened, all of a sudden there was a flood on the earth, and it got rid of all the violence. It got rid of all the corruption. It got rid of all the bad things that were happening on the earth. 
And because Noah was, a, was, was found perfect in the sight of God, he was a, a just man. And so he and his family were saved in the boat. And so just like Noah, we need to make sure that our, our heart is saved and that we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior so that we are on the boat to get to heaven. Amen. And so, you know what, what's amazing about that is at the end of the story, all of a sudden, whenever the, the, the ark lands on a hill and he sends out a dove and, and, and some animals to go find, like a birds to go find out if the land was open, what did God do? What did God show to promise that he would never do that again? A rainbow. That's right, a rainbow. And so you can see our rainbows beside us. And every time, boys and girls, every time I see a rainbow out in the sky, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of God's promise that, that it will never flood like that again on the earth. And God has a promise for us. It actually even reminds me of Jesus, how he sent his son Jesus. And that's a promise that we can accept Jesus and live up in heaven with Jesus forever. And so, boys and girls, I want to encourage you today with this story with Noah that put your faith in action. Faith is like a tool and you know what Noah had to put his faith in action and keep working for years to do and accomplish what God had instructed him to do well boys and girls thank you so much for enjoying this Bible story we'll see you guys next time and enjoy the rest of today's service a new beginning time passed and many people filled the earth everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time God's heart was filled with pain when he saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction, all the things God hates most. Now, Noah was God's friend, which was odd in those days because no one else was. But Noah listened to God. He talked to God. He just loved being with God, like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They're destroying themselves and each other and my world. And I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? <laughs> Neither did Noah. Luckily, God knew and he would show him. A storm is coming, God told Noah. But I will rescue you, I promise. I'll send the animals to you. Ones that creep and crawl and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb. And don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and sadness and everything that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark. That's short for a very large boat. Noah's neighbours came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert was nowhere near the sea and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an umbrella, let alone a boat? But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he just did what God told him to do. When the ark was ready, God said, All aboard! And Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. And it started raining. For minutes that joined up into hours, that joined up into days, that joined up into weeks and weeks. And the rain joined up into puddles, that joined up into rivers, that joined up into lakes, that joined up into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat, that had once seemed so big, suddenly seemed very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and lightning, and through it all, God was with them. And God kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray! Everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore, and it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. 
Now, everyone knew exactly what that meant. She had found a tree and land. The water was going down. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, Out you come! And so they did, everyone skipping and dancing onto dry land. The first thing Noah did was to thank God for rescuing them, just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, See, I have hung up my bow in the clouds. And there, in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow made of light. A rainbow. It was a new beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything went wrong again. But God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why, before the beginning of time, he had another plan. A better plan. A plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or his world. No, God's war bow was not pointing down at his people. It was pointing up into the heart of heaven. Brother kids, I'm Rob the Builder, the Cooler Builder. Um, I'm here to talk to you and ask you some questions. I have my, my sister Emily. She's not very tool efficient, or tool smart, I guess, but we're gonna teach her today. So Emily, if you come over here, I got my toolbox here with my trusty tools in here. All right, we have a first question for you kids. How did Noah act on God's word? Emily, in order to find the correct answer, you need to find a hammer. Is this a hammer? Why is that in there? <laughs> Peter. Is this a hammer? No, that's a level. Yes, very good, kid. So, Emily, what does it say on there? Built an ark. So Noah acted on God's word by building an ark, which God called him to do. Very good job, Emily. All right, kids, we have a second question for you today. Whenever you act on God's word, what do you release? Emily, you're going to find the answer on the screwdriver. Is this a screwdriver? No, those are pencils. Oh, is this a screwdriver? No, we've already gone over that. That's a level. Is this a screwdriver? That's a saw. Is this a screwdriver? Drill bits. Is this a screwdriver? Yes, very nice. Thank goodness. What's the answer? Faith. So kids, whenever you act on God's word, you release faith. Very nice. So kids, we have a third question for you today. So the third question is, we need to be doers of the word, not just what? The answer is on the wrench. Okay. Uh, is this a wrench? That's a screwdriver. What about this? That is a scoring knife. <sighs> what about these? Pliers. Mm. Oh, I think this is a wrench. Very good job. What's the answer? Hearer. That's right, Emily. We need to be doers of the word, not just hearers. James 1.22. Very good job, kids. I can tell you were really paying attention. Have a great day. See you next time. Hi kids, we have had such a great time teaching you today about living a life of faith. Now faith is one of our tools, just like a construction worker has many tools that they use to get their job done, we use our faith as a tool to receive all of the promises of God, and that includes salvation. In order to start living a life of faith, the first thing we need to do is to accept Jesus as our Savior. So if you have not accepted Jesus, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that right now. So bow your heads, close your eyes and pray with me. Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus. I believe that Jesus came to this earth, that he lived and that he died for me. I believe that he died on the cross and that after three days he rose again and that he is seated at your right hand in heaven. 
God, I accept Jesus into my heart. I make him my Lord and my Savior. God, I thank you that you forgive me of my sin, that you make me clean and make me new on the inside, God. And I thank you that I get to start living a life of faith with Jesus today. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Kids, congratulations. If you prayed that prayer, then you are now a Christian and living a life of faith is the best life you could ever live. Well, kids, we've had so much fun teaching you about faith. And I want to encourage all of you at home to make sure you are living a life full of faith. Continue to stay in church and hear the word. Well, we have another secret code for you today. Four words, seven letters. And we're giving you the two words in the middle. So make sure you found all seven letters to form today's secret code for another 20 Bible Bucks. This makes episode 24. So with next week's episode, it will be a total of 500 Bible Bucks that you can earn when you come back to celebration. So speaking of coming back to celebration, grab your Bible, grab your secret code list, and we will see you on Sunday, September 13th. Until next time, bye. Thank you for watching Celebration Online. I want to encourage all of you to make sure you're in church. We have three wonderful locations with three amazing children's ministries that you can be a part of. We have Columbia, South Carolina. If you live in that area, please go see Pastor JT and Miss Natalie at their church. If you live in the Georgetown area, please go see Pastor Justin and Miss Joanna at their church. And last, if you live right here in Florence, South Carolina, come see us. You can meet my husband, Pastor Steve, and see myself over here in celebration. We have a great time every Sunday. Episode of celebration, we got a fun song service for you. I progressively got more country as we went. <laughs>